we were more than happy to have found shelter in time. When we moved further into the cave, we noticed we were not the only ones seeking shelter there. In the glow of our torches, we recognized a man leaning against the cave wall. He spoke to him, but the stranger did not react. On closer inspection, we realized why. The man was dead. He was frozen stiff, and it was likely he had already been there for quite some time. The man was wearing a monk's robe and presumably had an attack of weakness during a pilgrimage. Hayes brought my attention to something. The torn up and burnt remains of a parchment lay beside the corpse. It is possible that the monk had used the last of his strength to build a fire. On examining the burnt remains more closely, it turned out to be a map. Hayes was able to determine a few checkpoints and thus conclude that it showed the region we were in. The texts we were able to identify on the map were written in an ancient script of which Hayes was able to translate little. While the professor's eyes wandered across the map, he suddenly gasped. His trembling fingers move over one word. Kem Ba Long, Hayes, who had studied every possible source of information prior to beginning his expedition, explained that many myths and legends shrouded a valley by that name. They say there is an ancient monastery in the valley where no outsider has ever been. According to the legends, the monks from Kem Ba Long Valley guard an ancient and very powerful secret. It was possible that we had come across a key to this hidden valley, and Hayes suddenly became excited when he realized what that could mean for him, the leader of the Tibet expedition. In that moment, I took a closer look at the dead monk. Could he be one of those monks living a secluded life in the valley? Where did he want to go? Or was he returning from somewhere and didn't have the strength to continue? My eyes dropped to his hands and I noticed that the fingers of his left hand were wrapped tightly around something. Hayes noticed it too and opened the clutched fingers in a somewhat harsh manner. Hayes grasped the object and held it to the light of my torch. It was a stone, resembling the eye of a dragon. There was a green gemstone in its center, through which the light was refracted, falling onto the walls in a most fascinating pattern. Hayes put the stone away. He must have noticed the look on my face, because he justified himself. He remarked, that the stone was better off in the hands of a researcher than those of some farmers or shepherds who might discover the cave someday. Okay, now skip a few passages. Did they find the monastery? Hold your horses. It's been a while since I last read this stuff. I'm a little rusty. They headed off to find the Kembalung Valley, but the approaching winter made it impossible. They couldn't make it through the mountains, so they broke off the hunt. They got home and Hayes tried to raise money for another expedition with better equipment, but nobody was interested. People figured he was hunting myths. Uncle drew a map showing the valley's estimated location. It shows us where they gave up as well. Perfect. We can use it. I don't know. It's all pretty vague. How do you know the monastery exists at all? Hayes and your uncle believed it was here. Right now that's good enough for me. And to be perfectly honest, it is our only chance. Then I suppose we don't have a choice. Wait, can you hear that? Sounds like an engine. Oh no, not another plane. No, no, that's not a plane. It sounds more like... A truck. Grab your stuff. Change of plan. What? We're following the truck. It must be going somewhere. Could 
we stop for a moment, please? No, we need to keep moving. The snow's already starting to cover the tracks. Can you make it a bit further? Do I have a choice? I'm sure we'll find something soon. And what makes you so sure? I'm a boundless optimist. Hey, what is that? Looks like a military camp. I didn't know Tibet had an army. They don't. Remember that fighter plane? Germans? What are they doing here? Have they attacked Tibet? I doubt it. Let's break out the glasses. Damn it. What's going on? They're holding British soldiers captive. There's at least one officer with them. Richard? No, not Richard. But maybe someone from his unit. They must have met the Germans somewhere along the line. What are we going to do? What do you think? Rescue the officer, debrief him, find the rest of his group, and get everyone home in time for tea and medals. And we do that how? We? Forget it, Kim. You've made it this far, but you're sitting this one out. What? You expect me to just sit here and watch while you break into a heavily guarded military camp, get caught and tortured, and then leave me to freeze to death? For now, we just need to get the lay of the land. Then we'll wait till dark and make a foolproof plan. How's that? Why do I always let you talk me round? Maybe because you actually think I'm a pretty great guy. Dream on, Paddock. 